Father's Day. Now, I know this day does not get the same amount of fanfare as Mother's Day, and I think most com men are comfortable with that. Um, most men don't want the big hoopla that goes along in Mother's Day. Um, if they get a day could to kind of do one of their favorite activities or maybe get their favorite meal, um, they're usually feeling pretty good about it. Um, fathers and men in general, we kind of like to be known as the problem solvers, and sometimes that's frustrate women to no end because sometimes women just want to, what is say, vent or share their problems, and they don't want the man to try to fix it. Um, that's a problem with me because my mind always works as a problem solver. So, um, so sometimes as men in general, we like to be kind of known as problem solvers. If there's a problem within the household that needs to be resolved, then the father is more than happy to put on his red cape and come flying in to save the day like the superhero that he is. Now, like most superheroes, fathers don't need a celebration for their saving the day. They are just happy that they can help. Does that sound like your father? Today we're going to look at a very important teaching from the father. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 15. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 15. And I'm sure for a few of you this may sound familiar. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us of our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you not, do not forgive men their sins, your, fa your Father will not forgive your sins. Sound familiar? Anybody hear those verses before? Yeah, the Lord's Prayer, right? It's the Lord's Prayer. Now, you may be wondering why I chose to read the Lord's Prayer as a way to celebrate Father's Day. Now, I could have picked any of the passage that talked about children listening and honoring their fathers or parents. I could have focused on the problems that happens when children don't listen to their fathers or parents. I, I could have picked any one of those passages, which I tend to do on some Father's and Mother's Day as I, I work that way through. But that's not the direction I wanted to talk about today for this Father's Day. Because when I thought of myself as my role as a father, I wanted to talk about the things I thought was most important that I did as a father. My daughter just turned uh, 30 a little over a week ago. I know it's hard when I look 20, but I know she, you know, she just turned 30 a little over a week ago. As I look at all the things um, I did with my daughter, and if I rated them from most important to least important, I would say that love obviously was the thing at the very top showing her that I loved her, um, and, and show that through her, throughout her life. Um, loving even when the decisions are decisions you would not necessarily agree with. Loving when you're helping her get back on her feet. Whatever we do with the child, love was the most important thing that I showed my daughter, and I must continue to show my daughter. But there's something else I put very high on that list of things that I did as a father, and one of that is all the lessons and instructions that we teach our children as parents. And I was able to, you know, throughout my daughter's life, and guess what? Just because she's an adult, I don't stop teaching lessons. I don't stop uh, uh, giving advice. It was interesting because I, I walked in on Friday and Sue's on the speakerphone with Jen, uh, our daughter, and they're talking about her signing up for the new health care plan at her work. So she's asking advice, what do I need, what I don't need, should I do this and should I do that? So even at the age of 30, you're still giving advice, and of course, advice for retirement plans, those things. That never stops, and so they, that was something I consider very important as a father. And as fathers, we kind of think of the way we raise our children, the way we teach them, the wisdom we share, 
and we are really preparing them for their life as adults. And some of the most important information that we can give our children is that preparation as they grow. Believe it or not, our job as parents is to educate our children so they can be functioning adults. Now, as the, the world has changed, I understand adulting is a choice. I don't know how any of you have heard what adulting is. If you haven't, raise your hand. I'm gonna... Adulting is when young people decide they're not ready to be an adult yet. Despite that they could be 25, 27, 30, they're like, we're, we're, we're adulting. We're not ready to do that yet. You know, when I learned that when I was an adult, when I was kicked out at 18, a week after graduation, I was in boot camp. Guess what? A drill sergeant lets you know you're an adult really quick. There, there was no choice. I'm sorry, drill sergeant. I think today I'm not ready to be an adult. I don't think he would have responded well to that response. So part of our lessons is we're to raise our children so they leave the house and can go and grow and be on their own. So you still might be wondering then, why did I choose the Lord's Prayer as a passage if today I'm kind of talking about instructing our children? Well, the Lord's Prayer is a list of instructions from our one true Father in heaven. So what I want to do today is I want us to look at the Lord's Prayer, kind of breaking it down verse by verse, and let's see if it isn't full of instructions from the Father on how we are to live our lives. So it starts out, our Father in heaven. This not only indicates God is majestic and God is holy, but that he is also personal and loving when he says father. Now I know not every household has a father that people can, you know, would say was a loving father or someone that they um, had a personal relationship. Unfortunately, we have a lot of broken households where some children don't even know who their father is or were never raised by their father. But when we talk about the, pers the perfect relationship, our father in heaven is talking about a personal and loving father. And when we are referring to him as our father, we are referring to him as someone who cares about us, someone who cares for us. So our Father in heaven says all of that. Hallowed be your name. By calling the name hallowed, we are showing honor and respect. The phrase teaches us not to use his name lightly and that we should be careful in how we use the name of God and be respectful of it at all times. It's interesting. A lot of you know that I golf. I golf on a regular basis. And a lot of times when you golf, we, rarely do we go with a, as a foursome. And we usually get paired up with other people. Well, the first thing I do when I get paired up with other people is not tell them what my job is. Because you can mess up somebody's golf game seriously if you tell them you're a pastor. Because now they don't know what your words to use. They're all frustrated. But every time I'm out there and I hear somebody hit a golf ball and they say, J.C., in frustration, the first thing I say is, don't blame him. He didn't hit that shot. Because that name is hallowed. It should be used in respect. It should be used with honor and dignity. dignity. There's a lot of words you can use to show frustration. That should not be one of them. You know, another thing that's really bothering, bothering me, oh, my God, right? That's a big phrase now. OMG is a big text. You know, anytime you're shocked, oh, my God, really? Is that how we're using that name as hallowed? You can say, oh, my. You can say, gee whiz. You can say it a lot of different things. But we've taken the name of God, and we have taken the hallowedness away from it. Well, when we say the Lord's Prayer, that's an instruction to say, hallowed be thy name. Next, your kingdom come. This phrase is welcoming God's spiritual reign. This is recognizing God's kingdom now on earth while waiting for the new heaven and new earth when all of evil is destroyed. When we are saying those, those words, your kingdom come, we are acknowledging that God is in control. Then that's followed up by your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now we're praying that God's perfect purpose will be accomplished on earth as well as in heaven. 
We are saying that we trust the Father and His purpose for all things. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then we say, give us today our daily bread. We are acknowledging to God that everything that we have comes from Him. When we acknowledge that give us today our daily bread. Now this is, when we are talking about lessons that are being taught and should, should be shared with our children, one of those lessons should be that everything we have, everything we receive, comes from God. Now, we may be able to sustain ourselves for a short period of time. Yeah, we can go to the grocery store and buy some food, and that will sustain us for a short period of time. But when we are talking about sustaining ourselves forever, and when you're talking about eternity, the only possible way for that has happened is through our Father in heaven. So when we say, give us today our daily bread, we are acknowledging everything comes from God. Then it says, forgive us of our debts as we also forget our debtors. This is a lesson about forgiveness. Remember, everything I'm reading is a life instruction, a life lesson from the Father. So this is a lesson about forgiveness. If we want God to forgive us, then we must also forgive those who owe us. We know that God forgave us of our debts when he sent Jesus Christ as the ransom for our debt um, to pay for that on the cross through his blood. A debt we could never pay on our own, but a debt that could only be paid by the blood of the perfect lamb. So what does that teach us about forgiveness and those who are in debt to us? How we must forgive. Then it says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now we need to understand that God does not lead us into temptation. Satan leads us in temptation, and, but we see that God has promised throughout Scripture. You can look at 1 Corinthians 10, 13, where God says, we will never be tested beyond what we can bear. So yes, we are going to be tested, but God's not leading us into temptation. That's Satan tempting us. And God is saying, I promise you, you will not be tempted with more than what you can handle. So as long as we continue to rely on God during any trials, or temptations, or tribulations, God will protect us from the evil one. He will give us the strength to overcome. Then, it's, then I added the two verses, verses 14 and 15, it says, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So I included these verses because, again, it's a big focus on forgiveness. If you are willing to forgive men when they sin against you, then our Heavenly Father is willing to do the same for you. But if we don't forgive the sin of others, then our Father will not forgive us. That sounds a little steep, right? But the very good lesson we all need to learn is someone is sitting here harboring grudges. We can't continue to hold those grudges. We need to forgive people. Um, who sin against us and expect the Father will also completely forgive us. It's interesting because if we are holding grudges and we're judging other people, we're not fit to judge other people. I always tell people, I said, I for, I, I'll forgive you. I said, but it's not me you need to worry about. You got to be right with God. He's the one that's going to be judging, not me. I'm not qualified to judge because I know how sinful and how faulty I am in my human life. I know I still make mistakes. So when we say we have become a Christian, we're making that statement that we're trying, trying to strive to be like Christ. That means we got to work on some things that we're instructed here by the Father. And one of those is forgiveness. Jesus is telling us how to be like him based on the instructions given by the Father. So when, if we are talking about Father's Day, and some of the most important information that where we share with our children and the instructions about life and that we pass on to them, doesn't it make sense that the instructions passed down from the Heavenly Father are much more important? I'm kind of thinking the heavy fa Heavenly Father knows about raising children a lot better than I do. So if the, if the Lord's Prayer is a lesson in instructions, maybe we need to take heed. So it's not just a lesson on how to pray. It's actually an easy-to-remember instruction manual about life from the one true Father. So I hope the fathers out here, you do enjoy your Father's Day, 
and hopefully you'll be able to do something you enjoy, um, and you, or you get something you, you prefer, your favorite meal, whatever it is. Um, we touched how important the instructions a father share with their children are to help shape their lives. Fathers like to be that problem solver, rush in with their red cape, saving the day. But let's not leave without the understanding the instructions we all received from our Father in the heaven in the verses of the Lord's Prayer. They are the lessons worth remembering and sharing with all those that you truly care about. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful. And Lord, when we look at the ways that you teach and you instruct, and you told us this is how you pray with the, with the Lord's Prayer. It's so much more than just a prayer. It's an instruction manual telling us what we need to do as we live our lives. And Lord, I, I love the part where it says, you know, we will be able to handle whatever trials or temptations come along because you won't give us more than what we can handle. So Lord, may we take these life lessons and reflect your words in our actions, in our attitudes. So we ask, Lord, give us that strength, because as you know, Lord, we are weak, but you are strong. And may you be glorified by the lives that we live, and may we share your message with those who don't know. In your all-powerful and holy name, amen.